Hey Han, I'm Chloe and this is the Seated Swan or Sit Variation tutorial. My mission is to share my passion for pole dancing and make pole dancing easy to learn and accessible. This is the 21st video of the beginner pole trick tutorial series. In order to maximize your training out of all the videos, I highly recommend you to start from the very first video of this playlist as the tricks will be a progression of the video before. The seated swan or the sit variation is a really, really pretty trick as the name states. We're going to have two different leg variations, so we shall go through that today. This video is mirrored for your ease of learning. I'll also have a red wristband on my right wrist and my right ankle to indicate the right side of my body if you do get confused of the direction. This trick tutorial is created for you for informational and educational purposes only and for you to enjoy learning pole dancing from the comfort of your own home. Please participate at your own risk and don't work beyond your capability and seek help or spawning when necessary. For any health concerns, please make sure to seek professional medical advice. Please also you make sure you warm up your body before you start this video. I have a warm up playlist depending on your level under the playlist warm up so that you can try before you try the tricks. If you enjoy this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up so that I know to create more of these kinds of videos and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet so that you are notified every single week I upload a video. If you're looking to further your pole journey and combining tricks and dance together, then consider signing up for my online learning platform, Pole Art Vault, where we put all the tricks together into a combo and learning an entire routine with combos and dance together. You can find the link in the description below for further information. Alrighty, without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. Now, let's get into our conditioning. For our conditioning today, we are going to do our pull up into a sit. We have done this in our previous trick tutorial series before, but today we are really going to start focusing on trying not to slide down the pole as we come into our sit. Now, this is what I mean. So, we're going to come onto our toes with our inside hand on top, outside hand on the bottom making sure that your hand is in front of your chest. From here, you're going to pull the pole down and then you're going to come into our sit with your inside ankle on top, outside ankle on the bottom, making sure that your hip is tilted. Now, what I mean by sliding down the pole is you're starting here and then you go Now, if this is you, this is totally, totally normal. And again, this is one of those things where we keep working on our engagement and the stronger we get and the more conditioning we do, the easier it is for you to do this one. So try and just try your best to keep your hand in front of your chest if you can. So rather than hanging in your shoulder, you're really thinking about squeezing and pulling the pole down in front of your chest. Initially, you can just get your chest or tummy onto the pole, making sure that you're leaning ever so slightly to the side so that you can really hip tilt over and then you are in your sit. Well done. Now, we are going to just do two on each side. There is two done. So let's try it on your other side as well. So you're gonna come onto your toes, inside hand on top, outside hand on the bottom. From here, hand in front of your chest, making sure that you're leaning to your side a little so that you can get your inside ankle on top, outside on top, on the bottom, sorry. And then you are in your pole sit with your legs straight. Well done. Now again, keep working on your engagement and the more you do it, the better you get. All right. One last one, hand in front of your chest, pulling yourself down into your sit. And there is your conditioning done. Well done. Alrighty, let's get into our seated swan or sit variation. Now for this particular trick, you can do it both on spin and static. But as always, I'm going to do an honest spin pole because I just like spin pole. I think it just looks really pretty. So this is what your seated swan or sit variation looks like.
And this is your second variation. Rightio, let's break our seated swan or sit variation down. So, you're going to start off with coming into your sit. Now remember, you really want to be able to keep your body exactly that same height rather than dropping down into your sit. And again, if you keep working on it, you will get there. Don't worry, we'll keep working on these. So, once you come into your sit, you're going to get your outside hand into a cup grip. So, this is going to be a new grip for you today. So, what a cup grip is, is that when you're grabbing the pole, all of your fingers are on one side of the pole. So commonly, in the past, all the tricks that we've done, say with your inside hand, you're grabbing the pole with four of your fingers on one side and your thumb on the other side wrapped around like as if you're grabbing like a coke can now instead of your thumb on the other side of the pole you are going to get your thumb onto the same side and there is your cup grip now in terms of your cup grip there's both thumb facing up and thumb facing down for this particular one we are going to have our thumb facing down so your outside hand comes above your head and then you're going to come into your cup grip thumb facing down now from here you're going to bring your inside arm through this gap and then you're going to push into your inside hand taking your outside hand off and then you are in your seated swan with both of your legs straight and there's your first leg variation so let's try this from the pole coming onto your toes hand in front of your chest you're going to come into your sit Make sure your hip tilting over to the front. Outside hand comes above your head in your cup grip. From here, you're gonna take your inside hand off. You're going to thread your body through and then pushing into your inside arm. You're gonna push your chest forward, push into your inside arm. And then there is your seated swan. To come out, you're gonna grab the pole back and then rolling yourself out. Well done. Let's try it on the other side. So grabbing the pole inside and up, outside hand on the bottom, coming into your sit, making sure that your hip is tilted. Outside hand comes across, thumb facing down in your cup grip. You're going to thread your inside arm through this gap, pushing into your inside arm, pushing your chest forward, and then you're going to come into your seated swan with your legs straight. To come back, you're gonna grab the pole back and then coming out. Well done. Now let's try our second leg variation. Now this one is actually probably my favorite out of both the ones because with your first variation, it's more just like a no handed sit, which we have sort of done in the past. So, into your sit we go. Outside hand comes into your cup grip. You're going to thread your arm through. You're gonna push into your inside hand and then you're going to bend your inside leg. So remember your inside leg, same hand as your knee that's on the front. You're gonna take your outside and off and then you're in your seated swan. Well done. All right, let's try it on the other side. Outside hand cup grip, threading your body through, pushing into your inside arm, bending your inside leg, taking the outside hand off. Beautiful, well done. And there is your seated swan, leg straight and one leg bent. Now let's go through some tips and common mistakes. Now first common mistake is when you are threading your body through, not bringing your inside arm away from the pole. Now, what I mean by that is, once you come into your outside hand cup grip, that when you're bringing your inside hand through, you might have felt 
like your arm is getting stuck. Now, if your arm is getting stuck, most likely three different uh, possible, I guess, uh, solutions that we can think about. So your outside hand is probably either too high that your body, you won't be able to create the, this gap to thread your arm through. You're not maybe leaning forward enough and you're probably not twisting your body out enough. Now, if you have tight shoulders, this is gonna be a little bit of a tricky one. So make sure that you really stretch out your shoulders before you do this one. Or alternatively, what you can do is instead of coming into your cup grip, you can bring your outside hand low so that you can bring your inside arms through this gap. So again, keeping your outside hand low and then threading through. Now, I highly recommend you to start working on your cup grip and also in your shoulder flexibility because later on when we're doing other tricks, you are going to really start to use your shoulders a lot. So I highly suggest you to start working on your shoulders. I have a flexibility tutorial if you need it and then I shall link it in the description below as well if you wanna start working on your shoulder flexibility. Now, again, make sure that your outside hand is just above your head. You're, when you're threading your arm through, making sure that you're leaning back. So the more you lean back, you see how like there's an extra gap that I create? And that way you can actually thread your arm through. Now from here, when you're pushing into your inside arm, if you feel like you're getting stuck here, make sure that you're twisting your body out. You see how like right now I'm here, as soon as I twist my body out, I have that extra gap to bring my inside arm through this gap. So, cup grip, leaning back, twisting your body towards your armpit. So think about sniffing your outside armpit, bringing your inside arm through, and then pushing into your inside arm. So bring your palm facing backwards, and then pushing your chest forward, and that is gonna allow you to get that extra grip on your seated swan. Now, second tip is making sure that your shelf is on the pole. Now, if you don't know what a shelf is, it is this squishiest part of this side. So you'll probably feel this pelvic bone on your, on your side and then also your rib cage. It is a squishy part that is in between your pelvis and also your rib cage. So when you're threading your body through, if you get into the right positioning, it is much easier for you to come into your seated swan. So make sure that your shelf is on the Sorry, pole. Could you say that again? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Siri is very um, vocal. <laughs> now, next tip is making sure that when you're coming into your sit, that you don't lose your hip tilt. If you don't tilt your hip, you are going to lose your grip. And also it's gonna kind of hard for you to come into your seated swan. So again, if you really wanna revise your pole sit, then I highly recommend you to watch my pole sit tutorial. And that's gonna help you to get into the right positioning for your pole sit. And then eat to your seated swan. Making sure that with your one leg bent is that your inside leg is bent. Now commonly, I always see people bending their outside leg. So make sure that it's the same leg that is with the shoulder in front of the pole. So remember, right shoulder, right knee bent. Left shoulder in front, left knee bent. Now, if you're struggling to bring your knee up, it might be because that you're not in the right positioning in your shelf. So make sure that you bring your, when you're bringing your inside leg up, that you bring it away from the pole if you're struggling to bring your knee up. So if you try to bring your knee in and then if you're internally rotating your knee, then it's going to be hard to bring your knee up. So make sure you bring your knee away from you so that you can bring it up. Alrighty, last tip. Make sure that you're not using what I call traffic controller hands. Now, with your seated swan, it is going to be very common when you're especially learning it that you're not thinking about your hand movement. Um, it is very normal and that is totally fine. But if you really want to elevate 
your seated swan, making sure that you don't forget your head movement and your hand movement. So head and hand. So once you come into your seated swan, make sure that you're very gentle with your wrist. So micro bending your elbow, and then think about like a lopsided e corgi. Think about bringing your middle finger and ring finger and your thumb together, and then bringing your index finger up, pinky down, and then gentle with your wrist and gentle with your elbows. Now, if you want to give it a bit of movement, that is going to give you that sort of like extra elevated moment. So if you want to keep moving it, that's going to give you a really nice sort of effect, I should say. So you can try that as well. Now with your head movement, you either look over your inside shoulder or look all the way up into the ceiling and that is going to give you that extra beautiful effect. And there you have it. There is all the tips and common mistakes I wanted to go through. So a little mindset tip today. Repetition is key. Now, when I was learning tricks in the beginning, I felt like a very uncoordinated giraffe on the pole. And you might feel that, or you might feel like a queen, whatever you feel. Um, make sure that you keep repeating the moves in order to make it look better. The first time you do it, nothing is going to be perfect. And honestly, I don't believe in such thing as perfection. There's always room for improvement and in a good way, in a healthy way. So if you feel like you're not getting the moves the way you want it to, all you need to do is keep practicing or maybe all you need is a little tip. And as I always mention, every single video, I'm going to have a tips and common mistakes part of the video. So make sure you revise that over and over again if you want to really nail down and beautify your tricks as well. And that is going to enable you to make your tricks look even better. But all you need to do is keep practicing and you will get there. Thank you so much for joining me in the Seated Swan slash Sit Variation tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I shall see you in the very next tutorial. Bye! Series, this is a variation. So, hi, sweetie. Come here, sweetie.